Hello, my name is Ibrahim Ahmed, and I welcome you all to my presentation. The topic of today's talk is a probabilistic self handling compute fabric based on 560 hexagonally coupled ring oscillators for solving combinatorial optimization problems. Here is the outline for this talk. I will discuss the motivation and prior art, then introduce the circuit and architecture design. Next, I will talk about the mapping of graph problems to the hardware. Finally, I will discuss the measured results before I conclude the talk. Now let's look at the motivation and prior art. Many modern applications such as autonomous vehicle routing, communication networks, uh, smart grid and DLSL routing use a class of computational problems known as combinatorial optimization problems or COPS. The solution time of these problems increases very rapidly with the number of variables when we use the traditional methods. Hence, these problems become intractable to solve using the traditional computer. The goal of this work is to find a more efficient way to solve these problems. An interesting way to solve combinatorial optimization problem is to map them to a graph, then use some embedding algorithm to map the graph to a spin network. Here, J represents the coupling strength between two spins, and H represents the uh, local bias or local field. Here, this equation determines the Ising Hamiltonian, which is the energy of the system. The network uses the coupling dynamics to find the lowest energy state here at the global minima. The spin states at global minima is the solution to the map problem. Many NP-hard and NP-conflict problem can be solved using Ising model. Finding a decent local minima is good enough for many of these problems. Let's look at some prior and contemporary arts. The quantum computers solve Ising model and they can theoretically solve a wide variety of problems. However, they need a very sophisticated hardware to maintain the quantum phenomena. For example, the DO system shown here has a volume of 700 cubic feet, while their actual chip is rather small and similar in size uh, to the Google's quantum computer chip. They also require 25 kilowatt of power. This is because the quantum computers are very sensitive to noise and their operating temperature requirement of minus 273 degrees Celsius also requires significant energy. As of right now, the quantum computers are not practical for many applications. Scientists are working to figure out how to achieve coupling dynamics that works in the room temperature. Some very interesting research is happening in these fields. For example, in this work, nanomagnets were used to achieve coupling dynamics. Here, the distance between the magnets determine the coupling strength. On the other hand, this work used laser and photonics to achieve the coupling dynamics. The caveat is this kind of approach may require a special process which adds uh, more fabrication challenges. Moreover, we have not seen many system level implementations solving a large number of problems yet. Hopefully we'll see more research to come out in the near future. This brings us to CMOS. CMOS is still the best known technology for computation. There are some proposals that implements Ising model using digital logic. For example, in this work, the spins are represented using SRAM memory and the interaction happen in the digital domain. However, these systems actually do not have the coupling dynamics. Hence, their system is more deterministic and may require additional time and energy to emulate the Ising model. Finally, uh, there are other proposals where CMOS oscillators are coupled with resistors to achieve the coupling dynamics. However, these proposals use standalone devices, which are not very practical. For example, this breadboard implementation had four spins and this PCB-based implementation had 240 spins. Hence, if we can have an integrated Ising computer that emulates coupling dynamics, that would have the best of the both worlds. Now let's look at the circuit and architecture design. It has been shown that any oscillator can work as the spin. There are several choices for oscillators in CMOS. For example, the LC oscillator 
compressed with register inductor and capacitor can have very low phase noise and less sensitivity to the PVT variation. However, they require a large area because of the inductor, which would limit the number of spins on the chip. On the other hand, ring oscillators have a smaller area and much simpler design. We can design them with inverter stages where each stage inverts the polarity of the previous stage. For comparison, the inductor area is much, much larger than the whole ring oscillator layout shown here. The ring oscillators do have higher phase noise and they have more sensitivity to PVD variation, but the Ising computers are, the applications are somewhat noise tolerant. At the same time, the exploration of different local minima often requires some noise as well. So we, in this work, we uh, chose ring oscillator to be used as our CMOS spin. Any coupling medium that actually enables energy transfer can be used as the coupling circuit. Here is an example of two ring oscillators coupled through a digital latch. This digital latch is actually inverting. So for positive coupling, we connected the latch between two opposite polarities. Intuitively, the positively coupled ring oscillators should have the same frequency as shown here, and they should also have the same phase. If the ring oscillator one has the state of one, then ring oscillator two should also have the same state. On the other hand, for negative coupling, the digital latch can be connected between the same polarity. We still expect them to have the same frequency. However, for the ring oscillator two, the state should be opposite of the ring oscillator one. In this work, we chose a hexagonal modular architecture where each unit cell can be coupled to six of its neighbors. We chose hexagon to mimic a spin-based system. If we needed the center to center distance between the neighbors to be the same, then hexagonal system would provide maximum number of neighbors. Here, the coupling was done using digitally controllable logic uh, latch-based design. This is an example of expected waveform. We expect each ring oscillator should oscillate with, uh, um, with the same phase with their neighbors or the opposite phase. And this is how their cell states should look like. The system should search for the global minima. However, for many applications, finding a decent local minima is also good enough. We designed a seven stage ring oscillator where six inverters uh, and one NAND gate was used. Here, the, one of the signal to the NAND gate comes from a global ring oscillator enable and the local ring oscillator enable. These two signals together determines which ring oscillators should be activated and when they will be activated. We added an NMOS transistor here where the gate was controlled using a global clock signal. This was done to um, stabilize the ring oscillator phases. We intentionally reduced the ring oscillator frequency by using stack transistor. Our major frequency at locking condition was 120 megahertz. As mentioned before, the coupling was done using digital latches. Here we designed the latches using two back-to-back -back inverters. Similar to the ring oscillators, the latches also have a global latch enable and a local latch enable signal. Together, they determine if the latch is programmed to be activated and if it is programmed to be activated, when this latch would be activated. The modular unit cell has ring oscillator block, the latch coupling block, read block, and the scan block. We have already discussed the ring oscillator and the latch. In each modular unit cell, there are three latches to connect to three other neighbors. Three more connections come from other neighbors, making the total number of available connection to six. The read block can sample any of the neighbors. We have some delay stages in the read block to determine the relative phase difference between the neighbors. The scan block programs the modular cell. Each cell requires four bits, one for the ring oscillator and three for the latches. As mentioned before, the global latch enable signal controls the program coupling latch and it determines when they will be turned on. When this signal is off, the ring oscillators are free to move around. 
Now, after the system is frequency locked, the ring oscillator periods would be stable. If we turn off the latches, like here, the ring oscillators would start to move around. If we keep it off for a short period of time, then not all the ring oscillators would change their states. However, some of them will move away from the previous states. Hence, the system, uh, when they stabilize again, would move to a new local minima. We repeated this process to achieve a better accuracy. Here is the die photo and the chip summary. We designed a 1.2 millimeter by 1.2 millimeter chip in the 65 nanometer CMOS technology. This is what the full chip layout looks like. The peak power was 23 milliwatt and power per cell was 41 microwatt. Our only limiting factor for keeping the number of oscillator to 560 was the chip area. Now let's look at the mapping of graph problem to hardware. We randomly generated spatial graphs that can be directly mapped to the chip. Here, each vertex represented by one ring oscillator. We generated graphs of two different difficulty levels. The easy cops as shown here are two color graphs. The chip can solve the easy, graphs prob easy graph problems with an accuracy of 98 to 100% accuracy. On the other hand, the four or more color graphs as shown here are designated as difficult cops. The chip solved difficult problems with various degree of accuracy. In this work, we solve anti-hard max cut problem. The max cut separates the graph into two groups. And the criteria here is to maximize the cut size. The cut size is the sum of all the connections between the two groups. Here, a toy example is shown. Here, there are total six vertices or six nodes. Now, in this example, we divided the nodes into two groups. There, there is only one node in one group and five other nodes in the second group. Now here, the cut size is the sum of all the edge connections between the two groups. And that was seven. For the second example, we have two nodes in one group and four other nodes in the second group. Now we would ignore the edge connections between the nodes in the same group. For example, this edge and this edge. And we'll only sum the edge weights between the two groups. For example, this red mark edges here. The cut size was nine for this particular combination. Similarly, when we have three, uh, three nodes in one group and three other in the second group, the cut size became 12 and the cut size was 16 for this combination. And this is the maximum we can get for this particular graph. Now, for that reason, this highest cut size is the result of the max cut problem. Now the question is why Ising model can solve the max cut problem. If we assume the edge weights are equivalent of the coupling weights with a negative polarity, then we can rewrite the Ising Hamiltonian this way. Here the assumption is the local bias is zero. Now, if we separate this summation term into two, into two uh, terms, one for all the uh, nodes in the different groups and other one is for all of them in the same group. And then if we simplify that, we arrive here and we can write the Hamiltonian as a constant, which is the sum of all the weights and the cut size. Now, the goal of this spin network is to minimize the Ising Hamiltonian and we can achieve that when the cut size is maximized. And this is why the Ising model can solve the max cut problem. Now let's look at some of the measured results. Now this was an interesting experiment. We programmed the chip with one graph as shown here. We measured the result and reprogrammed and we repeated that 100 times. It turned out that individual cell states can change in each iteration as shown here. Uh, we normalize the chip solutions with results from a commercial software, and we can see that the mass curve values were very consistent despite the solutions were changing in every iteration. We looked at the Hamming distance, and we figured out that the solutions were indeed very different as the distribution is around 0.5. This experiment verified that the chip was probabilistically exploring various minima, which is a necessary criteria to solve difficult problems. Next, we generate 150 unique graph problems, unique difficult graph problems of size 15 by 15. 
and we solve them using the chip. The blue bar shows the solution distribution of those 150 graphs measured from the chip. For each graph, we annealed only three times and took the best results. For comparison, the quantum computers actually annealed their chips thousands of times. We also sampled the whole search space one million times, and this is the solution distribution. You can see that the chip solution outperforms the random solutions. Now, similarly, we solve difficult graphs with various dimensions in this chip. For each dimension, we mapped 150 unique problems in the chip and measured the results. We can see that the chip is doing better when the graph size is reasonably smaller because the search space um, increases exponentially with the number of variables. On the other hand, we can see that the major solutions are actually consistently better than the uh, random solutions. Now let's compare our work with prior work. The first two columns require special process and the third and fourth one are CMOS based uh, systems. The fifth one is quantum computer and the last one is our work. Here the quantum computer requires a very low negative temperature where our chip can work in the room temperature. It becomes a uh, difficult job to do an apple to apple comparison because uh, the number of major solution in other works are relatively low than our work. Our estimated delay was less than 10 microseconds and uh, our measured accuracy for easy problems were 98 to 100%, where for the difficult problems, it was between 82 to 100%. Now let's look at the conclusion. To the best of our knowledge, we, this was the first hardware demonstration of a true coupling-based integrated CMOS Ising computer. We have experimentally verified that our chip probabilistically explored Beta's local minima. We mapped and solved 1,000 combinatorial optimization problems in the chip with an accuracy of 82 to 100%. This concludes my talk. Thank you for your attention.